So you're finally going to try Path of Exile. Maybe you just watched the trailer for the upcoming expansion. You figure, now's a good time to start, right? This game can be intimidating for new players, to say the least. But I assure you, it will get better with time. It took me three or four tries before it really clicked. And now I have over two and a half thousand hours played. That's two and a half thousand hours I could have learned a musical instrument or a new language but instead I played this fucking game. For this guide, I'm not gonna go too deep. I'll just give you a quick rundown of a few things to help you get started. More topics will be covered in later videos. So when you first open the game, you log in and you create your character. You're gonna see this screen that asks you to choose a league. Every three months or so, Path of Exile gets a completely new league that introduces a new game system or mechanic it's a bit like playing on a fresh server, and everyone levels a new character from level 1. Once the league is over, the content that was introduced may or may not get integrated into the base game. Also, all the characters created in that league will be migrated over to Standard League. Standard is like the graveyard where all your characters go to die. Then a new league is introduced, and the cycle repeats. Leagues introduce a whole lot of new content. And the fact that they're so frequent is a big reason why this game is still so popular and manages to stay fresh after so many years. On this screen, you can also choose whether you want to play Hardcore and or Solo Cell Found. Hardcore is a permadeath mode. If you die in Hardcore, you die in real life. <coughs> Solo Cell Found just disables trade and party play. So it's like turning on single player. If you're new, I would just go with the default option, which is the current league. The screen lets you pick your class. I would highly suggest following a build guide when you're first starting out. You are free to mess around and make up your own, but you're more likely to hit a wall and not know why. This might not be as fun as playing through with a functioning build. Another thing to mention is that any class can use any skill and equipment in the game as long as they meet the requirements. Some classes lean towards a certain playstyle, but you're not locked into anything whatsoever. Also, every class has three ascendancies. They kind of like specializations, and they give powerful bonuses. One obvious example is which can become a necromancer, which provides bonuses for minion playstyles. So if you like zombies or skeletons, necro is right up your alley. All right, let's do this. Now you can skip the tutorial, and I too like to live dangerously, but since you're new you should probably play through it first. If you didn't follow the tutorial, this wall will stop you from progressing. What's that? Baby can't follow instructions? Now unlike other games where you learn abilities as you level up, in Path of the Exile, skills are items. To equip the skill, you need to place the gem into an open socket on a piece of equipment you're wearing. So the color of the gem also needs to match the color of the socket, which can be red, green, or blue. On the bottom right, you can see your key bindings. You can see here that after I equip the gem, our skill is now bound to right click by default. But you can bind anything by clicking on the buttons here and choosing one of your equip skills. So you can even set your move to any other key. And I'm going to test it here. Right click, right click, right click. Okay, stop. Once you open this large chest, another gem will drop. This is a gem like before, but this is a support gem. You can equip it much the same way by placing it in a socket, but it doesn't do anything on its own. It needs to be linked to an active skill gem like the one you equipped before. You can see here that these two sockets are linked together. Once a support gem is linked to an active gem, it will buff that skill with some effect. This one gives my Viper Strike an increased chance to poison, but there are heaps of other ones you will find later. This is how you make skills really powerful, by linking lots of supports to it. Now you may have noticed I've lost some life. The good thing is, I can recover life and mana by using a flask. They're shown on the bottom left, which you can activate with hotkeys 1 to 5. You consume charges when you use them, but you regain charges by killing monsters. Alright, time for Hillock. Hillock is this boss over here. I've done this thousands of times, and I've never died to him. 
There you have it, I killed Helic and the baby barrier doesn't let me continue unless I click that little plus icon on the bottom left. Oh. So this is where most people shit their pants. The passive skill tree, it's actually not that complicated. As the name implies, it's all passives. It's just stats. You'll mostly be picking up the ones that boost your damage and defensives. I'm just going to pick up one of these and move on with my life. And that does it for this video. Like and subscribe if you'd like. My name's Alfalfa. See you in the next one.